Welcome to this video where we're going to have a look at the moon Mimas, which is one of Saturn's moons, and it's thought to have a stealth ocean. And we're going to have a look why it's thought to have a stealth ocean as opposed to just any normal ocean that maybe another moon might have. Now, there are a few moons in our solar system that we are reasonably confident have got quite significant oceans. Europa, which is one of Jupiter's moons, is thought to have a fairly significant ocean under its frozen surface. The same is true for Enceladus, which is one of Saturn's moons. So these are fairly comparable moons. They have a frozen surface and they're thought to have a fairly significant liquid water ocean. So this is how we would imagine it to actually be structured really. You'd have that thick frozen ice shell surface. You then have a fairly deep ocean underneath that and they're warmed internally by a rocky interior that has like some thermal vents similar to how we would expect some of our deep oceans to be on earth we also have plumes at the surface as well so there's some of this material is making it out into space we also get the same for Enceladus so a fairly similar sort of structure between the two you have a ice shell you then have a fairly significant ocean a rocky core and some thermal vents at the bottom that's warming this particular ocean so that's how we think they're structured the evidence to suggest that is that there are a lack of craters, so it suggests that there is an active surface there that's replenishing the surface, that frozen surface is being replenished. This could be an indication of a significant ocean underneath there that's replenishing the frozen surface. There are also plumes, so some material is being blown out into space, which we can see. So this is, um, I think, Enceladus and it was picked up by Cassini and you can see these water plumes being sent out into space and both Europa and Enceladus have these plumes. This is another indication that they may have an ocean. But another one is specific, well this is for Europa, but Jupiter has a fairly significant magnetic field but it's disrupted around Europa. Now one of the reasons why it could be disrupted around Europa is that it has a global salty ocean. So if you have a global salty ocean, then that can disrupt the magnetic field of Jupiter. So this is another indication that there's a significant ocean there on some of these moons. So it's caused by potentially a global salty ocean, which could distort those field lines as it's passing near to Europa. Now, why does Saturn's moon Mimas have a stealth ocean? What's a stealth ocean? Why do we think there's one there? Well, one of the key things that doesn't suggest it has an ocean like the other two is it has a cratered surface. So on, when you first look at it, it's got a cratered surface. It's not like the other ones. There isn't necessarily an active surface. There isn't something that's replenishing the surface material. So you, it's a very cratered surface. But there's some intriguing things when you look at the Herschel Impact Basin. So this is a large impact basin or crater on the surface. And some models have been ran to look at the shape of that. Now you can run it with no ocean. You can run it with a very deep ocean and a very shallow ice shell. Or you can do a thick ice shell and a shallow ocean. Now the best fit to the shape that we see now of when it actually occurred is that it had a fairly thick ice shell of about 55 kilometers and a fairly shallow ocean. You can get um, a fairly similar sort of shape if you have no ocean, but a deep ocean doesn't match the shape that it is when it actually occurred. Now the interesting thing here is that current observations now suggest that the ice sheet is about 19 kilometers thick. It has an internal ocean that has been expanding and warming since that original impact. So we can measure things like the temperature which is given here, we can measure a few other things, so we can get an idea to how thick the ice sheet is now, and it suggests that it's thinner than it was when that basin was originally formed from the impact. So it suggests it's actually been expanding and warming since that occurred, which is quite interesting in itself. You know, what's actually powering that? What's warming the ocean? What's making it larger? Now, another hint or indication that it's actually got an ocean there that is not that evident from the surface is that you have an oscillation of its rotation. Now this can be an indication there's, a, there's an ocean inside that we can't necessarily see. So what do we mean by an oscillation of Marmus's rotation? Well, 
Mimas is tidally locked. That means that as it goes around Saturn, its orbital period matches its rotation period. So it rotates on its axis. That is the same time it takes to go all the way around Saturn. It also means that the same face is facing towards Saturn. Our moon is the same. Our moon is tidally locked. When we look out at the moon, we always see the same face facing towards us, regardless of where it is as it goes around, that, and that is tidally locked. The same is true for Mimas. So the rotation period and the orbital period are the same. However, if we were to look from Saturn, it would appear to rock back and forth ever so slightly, because the rotation period and the orbital period continually overtake each other only ever so slightly, but if we were to look out at it, it would kind of rock back and forth. And one of the things that can cause that is having an internal liquid ocean. So again, looking at how this actually rocks back and forth, how it oscillates in rotation, can be an indication that it's actually got a liquid ocean underneath its surface that we is not that evident when we look at it directly compared to Europa and Enceladus. Now, there are other moons that have the potential to have oceans that we don't really know at the moment, we, but they could be inferred to have oceans. So you've got Pluto's moon, you've got lots of moons of Saturn, Jupiter, even Neptune's moon, Triton. All of these could potentially have oceans underneath their surface, almost similar to Mimas. And if Mimas does have a stealth ocean underneath, it's likely going to open up a new class of moons, really, that we weren't aware of to start with. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.